our partner in this event. You may wonder why it is that we in fact are holding this event about the suburbs in the downtown and not in the suburbs. And one of the reasons is because so many people do in fact watch these events through live streaming and it is uh, difficult to find a venue where we can in fact Small technical glitch. <laughs> the good news is the live streaming works. That's what we just learned. <laughs> so we're holding this event here in part because uh, we wanted to provide access across the entire city and the live streaming is one way of doing that. And the venues, uh, the other city venues where it was possible to do that were unfortunately not available. So we made the difficult decision to uh, again hold, and we will be holding the next one most likely in the city of Toronto as well. The good news is the downtown is a very central point for people regardless of where they're coming from in the city. This round table on the suburbs is part of a continuum of three sessions that all pertain to the suburbs and exploring conversations and questions around our suburbs. In the first three roundtables that we held at the beginning of the year, we held a session on uh, our urban fabric. We also, also held a session on our suburbs. And in the first session around the suburbs, it became very clear that there were a lot more conversations that we need to have related specifically to the suburban parts of our city as being our greatest opportunity as well as our greatest challenge moving forward in the future. And sometimes our suburbs have been a forgotten place and they need to be a more central part of our conversations moving forward in the city. So approximately a month ago, a month ago we held a round table on the form of the suburbs and we talked about the evolution of the city and began, I believe, deconstructing some myths around the form of the city, the suburbs as primarily low density family residential environments. We also talked about policies related to financing and municipal finance and how those policies have resulted in certain urban forms that might not be in keeping with longer term city building objectives. And we also talked about the redevelopment of the suburbs, the transformation of the suburbs and some of the market constraints that in fact impact and constrain how change is taking place in the suburbs and uh, result in constraints in places where we would like to see change take place in the suburbs. Today, we're shifting the focus and talking about the suburbs as an arrival city. And as <coughs> many of you probably uh, have seen in advertising for the session, we have just blatantly stolen the title of the session from Doug Saunders' book uh, of the same title, Arrival City. And one of the reasons why this is such an important session and conversation from my perspective after I read Doug Saunders' book several years ago, which really talked about global migration and the importance of ensuring and how integration happens in a city from people coming from elsewhere, it became very clear to me that we actually do this quite well in many ways, but it also became clear that the success of the city moving forward is how well we continue to act as an arrival city and how we assimilate people into our culture, our education systems, and our workforce when they arrive in this city. So I'm thrilled to say that the executive director of uh, social development, oh dear, I'm going to get your title wrong, Chris, um, of social development finance and administration, Chris Brillinger, who's joined me in a partner in pulling together this session today, recognizing that many of the topics that we're talking about today aren't really traditionally land use planning issues, but in fact intersect in a really important way with land use planning. So without further ado, I'd like to walk through a little bit of an introduction and overview to our presentation. Before I do so, I'd like to pause and recognize some of our city councillors that are here in the room with us today, not sitting in the right seats. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Shelley Carroll, 
Councillor George Hurst and Councillor John Parker. He's getting one off from his seat. I'm not sure why, but that's okay. There you go. Okay, I am. Uh, I also know that many other city councillors will be popping in and out as they're at committee meetings or attending meetings. Uh, that's happened at each one of our roundtables, and we're grateful for the moments that they take to come in and listen to this conversation. And we also know that some city councillors are also watching this session uh, on the live stream. So welcome to all of you who are, who are watching and participating in this session today. A little bit about our agenda in terms of how we're going to proceed. The session is set up in such a way that we want to begin by throwing a little content on the table. And as a result, we'll begin with presentations from all of our round table guests. We'll then take a short break, and then we'll spend the rest of the time in discussion. And it's very important for you to know that we want for this to be as robust and dynamic as possible. And as a result, you may have noticed that we have some comment cards when we walked in the door. You can grab some of them at the break. My staff will be bringing those cards up to me, and as I facilitate this roundtable, I'll be integrating your comments and questions into the conversation that we have. We also have a Twitter hashtag, uh, CC Roundtable, and you're more than welcome to tweet questions and comments, and we'll be following that live stream as well to shape and inform the conversation that we have in this session. We are also looking for future uh, roundtable comments, and we'll be asking you uh, at the break. We have a panel over here with some ideas that we've heard in other sessions. If you have ideas of other roundtables that you'd like to see us hold here at the city, please write them down on that board, and we'll absolutely take them into consideration as we plan future sessions. The intention of this roundtable is really to be a conversation where we ask some of the hard questions. And I'd like to encourage my panelists at the front of the room today, please don't be easy on us because we're in council chamber. This is a place that's as new to debate and challenge. And in fact, we'd like this to be an environment where we do ask the hard questions, including the questions that we really don't know how to answer. Because what we're trying to do here in the context of these round tables is inform and reshape the way we think about planning practice in the city planning division. Who's participating? We have stakeholders here that are rooted in the community. We have uh, stakeholders who are researchers. We also have city staff that are participating on the round table. Part of what we wanted to do in structuring these round tables was to bring a variety of different voices with different perspectives to shape the conversation moving forward. What are these roundtables? They're an opportunity to talk about the big issues. We want to try, however, and focus on the big themes. So today, although we'll be talking about the suburbs in general, it's important to know that the next suburb is going, the next roundtable is going to be on movement in the suburbs and how we move around. So the first one was on built form. This one is arrival city. The next one is on movement. So we're going to try and keep the focus today on the suburbs as an arrival city. We're also looking for fresh ideas. We want this session to be creative. And we will look at this session as part of an ongoing conversation. And for that reason, in each one of our roundtables, we're producing a summary document that is a summary of some of the themes and conversations, as well as some key actions for moving forward. In terms of the format, each of the presenters will present for approximately 10 minutes, then we'll have our brief discuss discussion and our questions and suggestions. Who has a seat I've talked about? We're to continue the conversation online. You can see that we have a website for these roundtables. We are updating that website regularly. The uh, live streaming is put on that website, so you can go and take a look at the previous roundtables, <laughs> as well as information about future upcoming roundtables. We also have an email address, and after each one of the roundtables, we receive a whole series of emails with thoughts and ideas that the conversation in this room has inspired. And we'd like to encourage you, if there's additional comments or ideas that you would like to contribute, to send us an email after this session so that we can use that to inform our thinking moving forward. And you'll notice that we have a, a Twitter handle. This is new. We're very excited about it. It's City Plan CO. That's for the entire City Planning Division. And the hashtag for this event is CC Roundtable. Without further ado, what I'd like to do now is invite 
Doug Saunders to come forward to present to us an introduction to the notion of a rival city. And some of you may be familiar with uh, the columns that Doug regularly writes in the Globe and Mail. I know I'm always looking for them. It's one of the first columns that I look for. Doug writes on international affairs, as well as serving as the paper's online opinion and debate editor. He's been with the Globe and Mail since 1995. He has been well awarded a whole variety of different awards, including the National Newspaper Award, the Canadian counterpart to the Pulitzer Prize, on five occasions. He published Arrival City in 2005, and in 2012, he published his second book, The Myth of the, of the Muslim Tide. Please join me in welcoming Doug Saunders. 